And hopefully this video will allow all rugby clubs to think about how can they do the same thing. They don't have to work with a charity necessarily, but how can they think about how they can help their kids and help their players get through the tough times. Really COVID, it didn't break the club, but it certainly had a big impact on the club. We lost an awful lot of our main supporters, the main um, past presidents and things. Um, they did pass away, they were more elderly, but they did pass away. And that made massive voids in the club um, that we had to fill. We had to um, try and take on what they were doing. I suppose our main one was Barry Sinclair when he passed, because I say he was Mr Portobello, he did everything. But when he passed last December, it was out of the blue, completely. Um, my phone just started buzzing and I didn't know, I had like five or six different people call calling me at the same time. Um, and then when I got to one of the calls and they told me, it was just devastation. He, had, he was always there for me to speak to. Um, so I went through a tough time myself um, and reached out to him to let him know that I was going to be at least looking to come back to rugby and straight away without, uh, without any hesitation he was very positive saying that I, he would love for me to come back and be sure that the guys from the team would miss me or have been missing me and they, want, they would love to see me um, and to really get that feeling like I, I, it was hard um, and I think Leslie touched on it as well the first game back there was, there was a lot of guys who were just wishing for that day to go in our favour and thankfully it did. We won that game against Harrington um, and it just, it very much assisted to try and get over the, the immediate impact of his loss. Last year we took the decision to work with the local primary schools. Um, the first, uh, one of the primary schools is a mile away from where I live and I was shocked by the level of uh, poverty that was so close to where I live. And I was taken aback by it. The children going to that school, to breakfast club, were going for breakfast, not because mum and dad were going to work. And I, we were all the coaches who came along, we all said the same thing. Wow, that's just on our doorstep. It's like, we thought, well, how do we help? And then we gradually sort of, with everything else that was going on, we did stumble across this cha charity. It is probably 400 metres from the rugby club and we didn't know it existed. And it's quite sad that we didn't know something so, that does so much good work was so close to us. And when, we, when I first spoke to Nikki, we realised right away that it was the right fit for us. First of all, it was kind of like, oh great, we'll be promoted a bit more and we'll be able to get, you know, and also linking into the work that the rugby club's doing. Um, I, I mean, I would like, going forward, I would like to look at more opportunities for us to do some joint work. Um, but we have a, a plan in place for me to come over and we're going to do some work with um, the kids that are playing here, so the, the small ones and the, you know, the teenagers and then older ones to look at. You know, when is it? When should you ask for help? When when would you think about? You know, because people think, oh, I don't want to be a burden. I don't. Um, I don't want to pressure people. I don't want to make them feel bad. Also, other people are really dismissive sometimes when we talk about our mental health. I mean, I've experienced that myself. You know, you tell somebody something and they don't. They're sort of, oh, pull yourself together. It'll be fine. You know, um, that kind of thing. So, we're going to try and break down that kind of. Um, that myth, you know, that you have to manage everything yourself um, and try and make it easier for people to get help when they need it. I think it, it says a lot about the club that they've, they've gone for this and that they're really proactively trying to get this partnership up and running. It lets them know that there's people there for them, ultimately. Um, we're all, we all try and sort of build that relationship of being friends at the club. You want them to be able to enjoy their time here, um, but that obviously comes with the element that they're giving up time um, so when they come here, not only is it a chance for them to maybe have a break from what's going on, um, but also if there is something that is particularly concerning to them, you know, by speaking to people here at the club, maybe there's people that they talk to who have been through similar experiences, can maybe pass on advice, maybe push them in the right direction. By us taking on the Let's Talk logos on the jackets we've got for the kids, what we're doing around the club, what we do for social media, it allows to promote them as a charity as well, which will 
hopefully allow them to get their word out a bit wider than what they currently are. And, and hopefully this video will allow all rugby clubs to think about how can they do the same thing. They don't have to work with a charity necessarily, but how can they think about how they can help their kids and help their players get through the tough times? Because that's what rugby does, it helps you as a group through the tough times.